Welcome in. It's time for the JCS Interactive Hour. Tom, I see you. Cheers, baby. I got a beer. I'm Cheers, ready. buddy. You got a little red wine? What are you doing there? A so, uh, Coke? I'm doing the no. I'm doing the uh, little espresso. Mm. So there you go. Little uh, plug yeah. for our friends at Deluna, the post game show. But uh, this is Hawaiian coffee. A little bit of Kahlua and the espresso blends. Oh, buddy. That's nice. I actually wish I was having that right now instead of what I'm drinking. That's well mm -hmm. done. That's that's <laughs> delicious. Good stuff. Um, hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. We're going to have a couple beers. We're going to hang out with you guys. And well, I'm going to have a couple beers. He's going to drink Deluna coffee, which is delicious with some uh, espresso and, uh, and, and liqueur. Um, yes, here I we am. go. We're here. Uh, what do you want to know? What do you want to talk about? Man, they're good. They're really good. Uh, I do want to say that. Um, Austin is already asking. Here we go. Um, yep. The storm took another turn east. Let's hope it continues to head east so we have a game and no one is hurt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what do we think, Tom? You look at the weather more than I do when it comes to these kinds of things, partly because you're curious, not because you're old. Yeah. Um, what is the <laughs> – It's both. I, I, You know, I had more interest in it as I got older. So oh, Of course, uh, yes. And by the way, you're going to start liking birds. Yeah, well, remember the Cardinals, the first ones <laughs> of, the, of the fall or the spring, I should say. Yeah. Correct. Uh, I will say, though, shout out to everybody who used to go to Florida State in my time. Channel 17, the weather scan. That was the 24-hour channel with just the music, and they had the, the forecast. That was where it was at. Um, it could be soupy, you know, with gusty winds, but not dangerous winds. You know, that, that's what it looks like right now. Uh, so I, I would, you know, I know a lot of our people care very much about the number. I'd stay away from it, guys. Remember last year, Ohio I'm State Northwestern. What's that? I'm not playing the game. Yeah, Ohio State Northwestern in November last year, the same Ohio State team that could have beaten Georgia, maybe should have in the in the college football playoff. Losing late to Northwestern. Yeah, it was seven seven deep in the third quarter. Yeah. You know, so it, it was a twenty one seven win for North, uh, Ohio State. But you know, just pump the brakes. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, it's clear and that's Florida State can just run up the number. When you have a, if we're talking gambling angles, I mean, when you have a storm and winds and all that sort of thing, you just leave, just leave those games alone. I mean, don't yep. don't don't play them. Yep. Uh, Six fifty seven on a Wednesday evening, fellas. That means you're damn skippy old school. Do you feel like the defense has been saving anything for the Clemson game? Um, I can barely read, Tom. I can. Tell yeah, you. I got you with tactics, like different yeah. tactics. Yeah. They've shown so much this year. I feel like they have more in store. The reason I say I can barely read, guys, I don't have my glasses on, and I just recently switched contacts, and my eyes are getting used to this stuff, so I, some of it gets blurry on me. I got you. Uh, so I, I am getting old. Um, as far as the defense, I actually think the offense has shown less mm. uh, to its opponents than the defense, and I do think coaches save things, but they didn't save anything against LSU, really. So no, no, you're not gonna you're not gonna really do anything uh, offensively or defensively against Southern Miss if you don't have to. Uh, and I thought that was the way they played. So I guess the answer is yes to some extent. But they had to break some things out against LSU. Um, yeah, because that's a team that can do something about it. Yeah, they may have more wrinkles and pressures. That's that's a, you can always install that kind of on the fly. You know, it's a different angle that you create. Uh, but Adam Fuller's been here a minute now. And there have been a lot of wrinkles over the years. I often talk about the defensive front and the you know combinations that they put together to create different looks and you know scare the living hell out of a quarterback or an offensive line, and then maybe something's coming at you from a different direction. It might look more exotic, but it might just be that you have better players this year. You know that's the thing that next week, if Clemson's offense is indeed in a bit of a nosedive and our defense is indeed on the rise, you might say, "Wow, we must have broke out a trick or two. It's like, no. Nah. They're just worse, and we're just better, you know? <laughs> That's true. Uh, by the way, hold on. I do want to go back and answer something I saw here. Nice ask Jeff anything, but it'll only answer the questions that he can read. No, no, this is not a ask Jeff anything. This is an interactive hour. Yeah. We're having a conversation. I've already done an ask me anything. I'll do another one when it's my turn. Apparently, we're rotating on these things. Mm -hmm. And – I'll pre-read some of those things so that I make sure I get to everything. Um, so that's tomorrow, how that uh, on that note, tomorrow's Michael on the board, six o'clock. There you go. Uh, yes, I can read all caps, Dave, go to hell. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Dylan, let, let me let me do this then. I'll read it for you. Two games, do you attribute oh. the lack of running up the middle more to the run blocking or the running back's decisions? I can read, guys. Sometimes it gets a little blurred. Um, I actually think it's a weakness right now, Tom. Mm. And that's what Bill Conley was referencing. Oh, he's referencing the offensive running game? Well, no, you're right. I've got that wrong. I've got that backwards. He should have been referencing that is what I meant to say. Yeah. Because I actually think that's something to reference. I'm not real sure that if we want to line up and run the ball uh, between the tackles consistently, that we're going to be able to do that right now. Now, we've also been banged up. Mm -hmm. We've had some guys out. It is the first two games of the season. Um, they had a game plan against Southern Miss where they just decided they wanted to throw deep. I actually went back and watched today, Tom, because I don't, I don't take everything Mike Norvell says as the gospel truth. Ooh. So I, I go back and look at it. Well, just save that. Anyhow, and I, I look to see what he's saying, and I went back and looked, and I do think their game plan was to challenge Southern Miss deep. I, do. I, find, that, I find that fascinating because just watching them, I did, again, the Alcorn State game, we talked about it uh, at Hotel Indigo on Saturday. You're going to be impressed with their defensive backs. They, they can handle one-on-one -on -one situations. They get downhill. They attack the ball. They look for the ball. But if you want to bludgeon them, you just run right at them. And, and, you know, I think some of this, to answer Dylan's question, for me, a little bit of it is they're not running into the favorable numbers because they're working on things. Like if Jordan Travis handed the ball off a few more times against LSU, I think that was a trust with Trey Benson factor. Uh, but then in week two, if he hands it off into four, you know, five and six man boxes, you know, Trey had nine yards of touch. He might have 15, 16 yards of touch if they decided to do that. But I, I think they were working on some stuff. So it, it remains to be seen. But the only real test you have is against a good LSU defensive front. So we'll see what they do against Clemson. Yeah, I can't wait for that, by the way. Uh, correct um, me yeah, if says, I was, yep. yeah, go ahead. No, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember seeing our left tackle Simmons in the game. Correct. That's correct. Do you think Texas A&M will pull an MSU on Jimbo Fisher? If they can. I mean, you got to actually, because, you know, that could be challenged in court. So you've got to actually have something. Um, I mean, we love to live in this fantasy world where we could find dirt on anybody and, you know, drop Coke in his desk or something. But I, I you know, these are real losses. <laughs> Those oil tycoons, really, though, when they want to do something, I believe that's true. Sure. Woody Harrelson was hired by them in uh, No Country for Old Men. Generally speaking, oil tycoons, if they really want to do something, just kill thousands of people and take their land. Mm -hmm. But that's different than firing a football coach, sir. Um, I don't know that they would raise it to that level. Um, I, you know, that's a we This is a fascinating situation at Texas A and M. I. I, we know a couple of reporters that are covering that team, and I know Jimbo better than any reporter on earth. I do. Hmm. And I, I would love to be there in a weird way to watch this thing play out because I know what he does when he's backed up against it, and I know how he responds to direct questions that he doesn't like. And so I'm really curious how that's going for those guys right about now. <laughs> the logo is slippery, my man. The, the logo is slippery at, at midfield. FDFC, who's been the most impressive freshman so far? A lot of choices. Um, you're right. A lot of choices. Uh, well, you know, that's interesting, Tom. Would you say Conrad? I think he might have actually intercepted that pass last week. I do, too. I wish they had reviewed it, actually. Yeah, yeah me too. Uh, the, the review that we got on television looked like the ball, if it was ruled an interception on the field, that it's hard to overturn that. I agree. I would have challenged it. Um, Conrad Hussey's the reason I bring him up is because he's been really good in practice, and then he got a chance with the ones early in this game, and he was yeah. good. He, yeah. he Like, he triggered. Yeah, I don't know. Me, yeah, Conrad runs a little hot, so it's nice to have a good moment for him when somebody is an emotional player, a passionate player. When anytime you have a good moment, I think that does well to settle them down for future appearances. Um, to me, Ashlyn Baker, uh, Barker. Well, he's a red shirt. He's a red shirt. 
I didn't mean to say Baker. Barker. Yeah. Yeah. He's a red shirt, but yes, he's been impressive. Uh, Destin counts. If you want to count him as a true freshman, you should. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw a wild card out there. I keep doing this, but Andre Otto, the offensive lineman, love him. It's a practice thing. I mean, you know, he made it on the field, but it's a practice thing. That they hit. That's a hit. That kid's going to be a good player. He's going to be a really good player. I think he could be good enough to be in the five next year. I don't disagree. He's good. Just needs to put on a little more weight. Yeah, he's good. Sydney Osser, how long do you see the starters playing if this game happens? Let's say it's moderate weather, not crazy weather. Well into the third quarter, um, you know, middle of the third quarter. I, I I don't I think if it's really windy and ugly, you know, points might be hard to come by and we get some bogged down drives and I the score isn't such that you feel comfortable putting in a bunch of backups, you know. So it's kind of middle of the third quarter. You might be up twenty one by then. Pull them. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh Eric asks, does Syracuse have a home game this weekend? And could that be a location that they move the game to in the carrier dome? Syracuse plays at Purdue this weekend, so that's not a bad idea. If you're going to move it in the region, the Carrier Dome, that's uh, that, that'll be about as loud for Boston College as Chestnut Hill would have been. They're going to have like you know 50 people there. And I know it's the Bandana game people show up for, and that's a great cause to show up for. But it ain't a football crowd. We were at that game uh, in 2015. Yeah, 14 to nothing FSU. It's it's not a football crowd, so yeah, they could move it to Syracuse. Um, by the way, Zyler just asked. Should Nick Saban retire and become the college football commissioner of a new mm. alignment? Uh, I'd love that. I I nominated him a while back. I I think he'd be great, but um, I don't think a lot of people would feel that way. I don't know. Um, you know, it's funny. When you look at Nick Saban, he's getting up there. What is he now, Tom? 78, 70, what, 75, 70, 74? Uh, what, what in the 70s. He yeah, and Mac Brown, he and Mac Brown are basically yeah. the same age. That's the funny part. Every uh, now and again, there's a moment where you see him and you go, ooh. Uh, 71. 71. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think we're only a couple of years away, guys, but college football probably needs him now. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have no patience for the uh, very obvious step backwards. Like, it's going to happen. It always starts really subtle with the giants of the game. The greatness um, begins to wane ever so slightly until it doesn't. And then all of a sudden we go from two losses to four losses, and then we get the indignant, and then we get the heels dug in. Yep. And then it's just a shit show, and everybody's like, okay, here we go. You know, and it, it hurts. It sucks. Riley asks, do you think that Norvell showed the onside kick to force future opponents to play honest and limit the chance of getting beat for a big return against? So coaches do that kind of thing all the time. Um, Ingram texted me that that's what he thought it was when we were talking the other night. I don't know about that. I, I might disagree on that. I might push back. He, everybody's right to assume that coaches show things sometimes to make other teams prepare for it. I think that's true. Um, I think they saw something in what Southern Miss was doing, and they just said, well, if you're going to do that, yeah. I mean, this is what we're going to do. And by the way, you should. You really should. Um, it doesn't mean it reveals to another team that that's in your arsenal. That's in everybody's arsenal. Everybody would kick an onside kick if they thought the middle of your uh, front line was leaving early. Or – if there was a certain side that that was happening, you might call a fake punt if you realized that a punt return unit was only showing to show, but was not actually engaging and watching. So you see something where they, they kind of go through the motions and turn to go back, and they're not yeah. really paying attention. If you saw that, you would take advantage of it. Well, and I'd say that it might not have been the express purpose of what Briley's asking, but it's a benefit of. I mean, sure. now, you, now you have to. You're forced yeah, it's an to. an ancillary so, benefit, sure. Yeah, whether or not it's the reasons. Cameron wants to know, are they playing this game? Cameron, I wish, and and in, in a world in which the JCS PR firm was in charge of conferences and networks, you would have a severe weather splash page that just exists that everybody could go to with updates. And the update might say, there's no update, but there would at least be a place 
that you could see if we were the ACC's PR firm that no considerations for game time change at this time. And then you, you check know, it in the morning and there's no considerations for a change of this. You would just have an ongoing dialogue with the people because if you're trying to travel to the game, Cameron, I get you. That's frustrating as hell. But there is, we have nothing. There is no news right now. They're about to add, um, because they've gotten in bed with gambling, uh, they're about to add injury reports yep. for college yep. football. So, yeah, pretty soon I think weather will play a part in this as well. Before you read that one, let me get to this one because I'll forget. Trey wants to know what game was it that during a touchdown you yelled so loud that you could hear it over the radio TV broadcast. Was it Clemson in 13? I thought of it randomly the other day. Now, it's famously the Virginia Tech game in which I said, suck it, Clemson, because we beat Virginia Tech on the road. And it was also a ruse that Tom and I put together. I was never actually next to the box, next to yeah. – Palmer and the crew, but it would it it does sound remarkably like I was. Okay, so um, we had told that before. That's been revealed before that it was a bit, and mostly you could tell it's a bit. I mean, how would you be? You know, we did a pregame show from uh, the defunct Rummies <laughs> before that game, so you would have had to get on a private jet to go up to Blacksburg in time for kickoff. Well, like, if you I remember, part of the ruse was that I did, um, yeah. because I was yes. working for ESPN. Yes. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. It's so good. Because it sounds like Jesse Palmer is getting irritated by you as you keep going. Yeah, I just leave it there. It's it's so good. Wait, no, can I talk about the making of? No. You, you don't want me to reveal the secret? No, leave it, oh. leave it in the bin. All right. Because there is another element to you guys that, that you don't know that's so good. Just leave it be. Okay. Uh, Garrett asks, uh, maybe you have historical context for this. I do. Okay, good. Mickey Andrews, why did he not go out for a height coaching job? He did. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, Mickey would have. Uh, well, that's a that's a that's a dicey conversation. Um, it right. depends. It depends on what you believe. Uh, so Mickey Han Andrews uh, had head coaching experience, but not in the NFL or, or college football in the sense that you're asking um he was a he was under the belief that when bobby got set to retire the reins would be handed over to him mm. did not know that uh is it possible fuller could go down the same road if they have continued success here let me circle back first and say within a certain timeline that was the belief but the end did not go as planned mm. and it extended beyond in my mind, what was reasonable. So there you go. Um, as far as what Fuller would do, uh, well, I mean, Adam Fuller is not in a position to be a head coach anywhere right now, and he's not close. So that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, good question. Uh, do you look for a return to a two running back set at Clemson? I would say yes, but I would also say Jaheim Bell counts as a back in that situation. I know he's listed as a tight end, but if you got Jaheim back there, I think that counts as a two back set. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think they'll throw the kitchen sink at him. They'll, they'll have a lot of things uh, ready for Clemson. I don't think we've shown a lot offensively. They, the wrinkles that they have that you alluded to on offense are many. Um, mm -hmm. They've got so many diversified, multiple kinds of players, meaning I don't have to sub you out and I can run what I want to run, whether that's tempo or I put you out and, you know, go out for a pass or I have you running the ball. They've got so many guys that can do that. Um, yeah, man, I, I, everything's on the table for Clemson. Speaking of on the table. By the way, because you have to win that game. Yeah. Yes, of course. Of course, if you don't, the way that Clemson has looked, good God. And we got to sit on that over a bye? No, thank you. FDFC says, do you know what's really blurry is Clemson's future? Um, I've got a conspiracy theory here that only could come to fruition if Clemson continues to cream to the side of the mountain, which is the moment that Elko beat them that Monday night, Ipte said, that guy's pretty good. If we, In case of emergency, we might want to call on that guy. 
Well, I would argue that that win was a fluke. Um, that that game should have never ended in that score. Mm-hmm. Um, if you watch the game, and we both did, Clemson's better than Duke. Um, but they lost 28 to 7 because football's weird and situations matter. Um, but Elko is a great coach. He couldn't wait to get out of Dodge at AM yep. and leave Jimbo, as a lot of assistants do. He got given an opportunity to be a head coach, and he's buttoned up and smart and hardworking. And he's got Duke playing buttoned up, smart and hardworking. And you have to beat Duke. And there are a lot of teams in this conference that will not go win games. So he's going to have success. Um, You can never really win at Duke playing football. And I think Elko's the kind of guy that would like to win a national championship, obviously. So if he gets afforded the opportunity to go to a place where he could get better athletes, um, not unlike Brian Kelly, he would do it. Um, I don't know what Clemson's plan is beyond Dabo. It seems a little premature. But if we're being honest, if we're being honest, now you and I can look at this and so can fans and say, I've seen this before. I know how this ends, but an administration has to be careful. I mean, this is a man that's won national championships. Yeah. And, and and was on the brink early in his career, took the pay cut to bring in the coordinator. So he has bounced back from death's door before. Yeah. So they're not going to be in a hurry. Yeah. All right. Here's a longer question. It's, it's in two parts. It's from Eric Breedlove, which is a great name. I have a question. I'll take you back. I know, to- Eric. He used to be a bartender at AJ's. Ah, well, this is uh, the question. I'll take you back to 2008. AJ's, rest in peace. There was a proposal to entertain and help with the pain of the lost decade. There was a challenge dreamed up that we never did. And I thought you guys did this, but maybe not. The beer and the bench. So here's the pitch. As punishment for constantly flaking on his hour number two responsibilities, yeah. you should make Corey compete against some college kids throwing up 225. Corey he- couldn't bench 225 if he wanted to. So I, I don't know. Uh, that's a non-starter. He, he can't. What it, that says 225, right? Yeah, 225. Yeah. Yeah, he can't bench 225. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being mean. Robert D. Guys, how tough is Toa Feely? Dude takes hits and never even gets up slow. He's tough. That's, that's a good point. It's not just about the little things he does. That, that dude takes some, he takes some licks. I like Toa Feely, and I like how much better he's gotten in his time here. I know it's become a running joke on the Jeff Cameron show that I ignore him. I hope his father and supporters understand um, that uh, I love the kid. I've just always, as a pure running back, liked other kids more. Mm -hmm. But I think Toa Feely is a Swiss Army guy. So, you know, I've always believed he was valuable, especially as a pass catcher. But he is also um, a big playmaker. You know, he's he's a playmaker. So I, I look at him in that way. I don't look at him as a pure running back, although he's become a much better running back. So there's. That. I think he's an insurance policy too. You needed Trayshawn Ward to win the Oklahoma game in the bowl. If something happens with Trey Benson where he's just not in sync with the scheme, looking in the right places, you may call on Toa Feely in a big game to be that horse or or Rodney Hill. Austin has a question about uh, this is from the dare to dream file. What playoff slash natty matchup would bring the most eyes in his mind? It would be Georgia in the semifinal and Texas in the national championship. What do you think? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, Florida state, Texas would, yeah, that'd be a huge draw. Michigan, Texas would be a huge draw. Is he talking about just us? Florida state. Yep. Florida state. Yeah, I mean, half. Florida state USC mm. would be mm. insane. Uh oh, Florida State USC might be the answer. Yeah, I think it's uh and, and you could pick two. It's like it's on the path. So I think I think playing Michigan in the Rose Bowl or USC in the Rose Bowl in the semifinal would do buku numbers. Man, that's crazy. And then you play in the national championship against either USC or or Texas. Because if you're talking yeah. about most yeah. eyes, you need yeah. different time zones. You need different time zones to get the big eyes on there. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, you do. And you want big markets. You want a big market. Um, USC is the only big market, really. Um, But Florida State is such a huge brand, a massive brand. Mm. One of the biggest brands in all the land. 
Philip asks, uh, has your eyes for weakness for the weakness of the team? So what you thought before the offseason changed from then until now? I like that question, Philip. Um, yes, 100% yes. Uh, I have concerns about the offensive line. Mm. Okay. Where? Run blocking? Yeah. It's totally backwards from camp. Makes no sense. They were very good at that in camp. Correct. Yeah, that's the answer. Who's the best backup on the team from Lance? Um, well, it depends. Um, do you mean like a third linebacker like DJ Lundy? I think that's in play. I think, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say DJ Lundy might be a good answer there. Um, I might say that the best backup is one of those. Running backs? I mean, Rodney Hill? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Rod Rodney Hill's pretty GD good. By the way, Marquiston Douglas is a good answer Great to answer. this question as well. He still is not getting as many snaps as Morlock. Okay. Um, I don't see it, Tom. I don't get it. I do not get it. I'm telling you now, Marquiston Douglas, right now, right now, I mean, not long term, right now, is a better player than Kyle Morlock. I do not understand this. I tend to agree. Uh, my answer, you'll you'll nod. It's uh, Josh Farmer. I think Josh. Well, uh, yeah, he's a, he's basically a starter, but yeah, I agree. But I think you might start Fabo and Fisk next to each other, and then out comes forty four. Yeah, but, but it, it doesn't take long. And by the way, Farmer started the game against LSU. So. Correct. Yep. Yep. With Brock's current rate of development, do you expect Mike to bring in a transfer quarterback to push he Tate and Luke? I don't think so. Nope. 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 Uh, Jeff is the MetLife turf. Worse than that of the Etsu with the sand on it. So it can't be. The Etsu turf was the worst thing I've ever had the misfortune of sliding on. Uh, I tried to make a tackle the first week in pads, and we went inside, and I slid, and I burned. I mean, this is the old turf, Tom, where you had – it was like cement with some green stuff on top. Ugh. And I got up, and I was bleeding on uh, both forearms. Um, they don't, that's not the turf anymore. Now they have the rubber pellets and like it gives, mm -hmm. I'm old turf. Didn't give when they invented it. You know, I never understood this when I was a, a, a very young man, the university of Florida ripped up their grass and put artificial turf down at the swamp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know this because, uh, that's what Emmett Smith ran on. That's what, you know, several really good Florida players ended up running on. And uh, I ended up going there with my stepdad, who I've talked about before as a UF law grad. He's a Gator grad. He's a diehard full Gator. And I had the good fortune growing up. My dad would take me to Florida State games. And my stepdad would occasionally take me when he went to Florida games. So I got to see great players and grow up and see those atmospheres. I remember the way that that stadium used to look. I remember the way our stadium used to look. But we, there was a time where you could go down on the field after games and you could run on that field. And everybody was so enamored with the idea of turf. So that you would go down on there. You're like, oh, what is this Astro turf? This is amazing. This, they have this in the Astrodome. This is incredible. And Florida was really, really adamant that their turf was better than the turf that you had originally seen. And it was. So to compare the turfs of yesteryear to today, you really can't. You wouldn't have believed how nasty the turf at Etsu was in the mini dome, which, by the way, they don't play on anymore. They play outdoors. My dad took both my boys. He's He's got a, a cabin up in Tennessee, and he took both my boys to Etsu to show them where I, where I once played. <laughs> Loosely, I say that. And, uh, and, and he showed them the stadium and then said, but your dad never stepped foot on this. He was over there in that dome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, King Spleen asks, do you guys think the player hype videos during dead balls at home games is a distraction of the players and their in-game focus? No. No. I don't think so either. The band should play more. I agree with everybody there in the breaks. You don't have to – this doesn't have to be an NBA game where Correct. you're hitting defense, defense, every possession. But I will say one thing. I, I always want to follow up on this if I can. There is music at practice all the time under Mike Norvell. All the time. And they're good. 
it was never the music. It was always the man. It was never the music. Right. It was always the man. Sorry. Had to get that off my chest. Uh, Justin, if Johnny doesn't get his drops under control, could you see him returning next season to improve his stock? Justin wants to fail enough. Raffles weighed in, and he's right. He remembers this. Uh, he he came. He he saw that bathroom. There was a bathroom upstairs when I lived in St. Pete that uh, was all gatored out. It was so ugly. Justin writes, "What uh, if Johnny doesn't get his jo- drops under control? Could his stock fall so far that he, he comes back next year to improve?" His I don't think stock? so. I don't think so. Um, I will tell you though. I I worry. Um, I, I, you know, let's watch Johnny closely. Yep. Let's see how this goes. I, I co-sign. I didn't see yesterday's practice. I was there today. He's been a monster and he's got a little anger about him. It, he'll be, he'll Nobody be, he's cares he about practice about this point, but I agree with you. Well, the, the drops in practice preceded the, the in game drops. He didn't and have he had great weeks last year, Tom, and had games where he dropped the ball. I mean, I just, I feel like it's the shanks personally. It, it comes and it goes with him. All right. Antoine, does Norvell's game plan to take is Norvell's game plan to take Clemson's soul this year? Do you think he goes for it with Clemson? Try to make a statement, embarrass them, do whatever he can? Oh, I would. And I do think he is geared that way. Um, I don't think he appreciated the accusations right. or inferences that were made by uh Wuhan Dabo. And uh Wuhan all but called him to the carpet as a competitor and a man. Yep. And uh, if you have a chance also, by the way, even if Wuhan hadn't done that, if you have a chance to bury somebody that's beaten your ass seven years in a row and has owned the conference, you've got to do it. And I'm not saying that'll be the position they're in on that Saturday, but if they are, I'm running it up. I'm trying to score more points than have ever been scored in that building. Yeah, look, you're up 38 to 17 on LSU late in the fourth, and you got your ones out there. Yeah, that that last touchdown we scored in Orlando, I don't know if it's running it up, but it's certainly on the aggressive side of the spectrum. So no, but it, should, it should be. It's LSU. I mean, they're grown ass men. Just play the game. Yeah, I, I agree. But that's not a situation where there's even something extra on the line. And then you pair it with the fact that there's a buy after, and you can air it out against LSU. We'll recover later. So I, I think if they're in position to do it, they will. But you got to be in position to do it. Sometimes you see teams put too much into a game, and and they, yeah, it's like, it's like uh, the great analogy for me is Rocky too. You know, how many times did Rocky out of emotion swing and miss and hit the ropes? And you're just like, good God. I thought that's what a little bit of the LSU first half was, but they were just so overhyped for stuff that they made routine mistakes. So hopefully they can reel that in against Clemson emotionally a little bit more. Eric, on that on that uh, topic, honest thoughts on the Clemson matchup. Everybody's looking ahead to it. Nobody's looking at BC other than the weather. So what do you think? Well, I like us. I think Clemson's in trouble. I've been saying this for two years. Um, I thought if we could ever get right that they're in trouble. I think they see through this fraud. And I think that um, this is a guy that, uh, you know, I, I get myself in trouble talking about this. I, I I don't appreciate people who utilize uh, aspects of culture in order to dupe people for their own gain. Mm. And I think that's what he does. Yep. Biggest concern after Clemson. Do pretty damn my- good, Tom. You got to give me credit on that. That is politically right down where it needs to be and yeah. correct. Yes, yeah. you, you PR firm would be very proud of that. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Biggest concern after Clemson is Duke or Miami? Miami. I tend to agree, but are we overvaluing what Texas A&M is? Nope. And it's just- I told you after the game against Miami of Ohio that Miami was better. Miami is better, period. I bet on that game. I bet them to cover. They covered easily against Miami of Ohio, and I believed, and so did you, that uh, Cristobal was right when he said that they were a much better team because of the line of scrimmage and because they had a quarterback that was in lockstep with the new coordinator. I think both things are true, and I think they're going to be pretty good. Wesley says, you guys going up to Boston? Nope. Would like to, you know, but uh, it's okay. It, it was so crazy the first month that it'll be all right. If you are going... Go to Remy's. I don't know if that's still the name of the bar, but uh, outside of Fenway, 
Well, I wonder if it would be anymore, right? Because his son got convicted of murder, I think, or yeah. And, yeah, obviously he had health issues as well, so I don't it's a know. It's toughie, yeah. But it's it basically it's the giant bar that has a second deck, and it's got a cross breeze, which is just so awesome. Now Saturday's weather is going to be rubbish, but in in normal conditions, remember that cross breeze we were watching Auburn LSU when the kid jumped over Leonard Fournette because he didn't want to tackle him. That's right. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> I do remember that. By the way, Briley, I'm not dismissing the idea that Texas A&M is a mess. I think Miami is that improved, and they have better athletes than Duke. And the question was specifically about Duke. Yeah. Travis asks, is Fitzy back, and can we depend on him in big games? Don't know about big games, but he is back. Yeah, that's fair. Yes and no. Yep. <laughs> mm hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so if you're looking at the rest of the schedule, I'll go off. And if you got more questions, uh, old Jeff has to go grab his son in about 15 no, we minutes. No, got, we got plenty of time. Keep going. 10, 15 minutes, we're good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, in about 15 minutes. If you got more questions, fire away. Mm -hmm. As you look at the rest of the schedule, what is the single biggest test for FSU on one side of the ball? Meaning, is it Clemson's defense, Duke's defense, Miami's offense? I mean, where is it in one phase of the game where you say that is going to tell me something about the Florida State side of the ball? So Van click Dyke and the Miami question. offense against Florida State's defense. Or yeah, click on that question, Tom, real quick. I want to read that very carefully, if you could. Oh, um, no, I made that one up. Oh, yeah. Well, then, damn you. That's really good. I was <laughs> going to give the, the the questioner a lot of credit, but I got to credit you. You did right. do that already. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So ask it again. Which is an aspect of a team that I'm most worried about that we'll face the rest one, of the year? One side of the ball versus Florida State's other opposite side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miami's offensive line against our defensive line. Mm. Interesting. So you would say that over, say, Clemson's defensive front against against our offensive line with your concerns about the offensive line. Yeah, I would because uh, we'll out scheme Clemson. We did last year. We just yeah. turned it over in key moments and looked stupid doing it. But I'm telling you now, that Miami offensive line is for real. Uh, they may have problems. They may lose in other aspects of the game. There could be, you know, I, I don't know what their culture is like in that locker room. I, if something goes south for them, how do they respond? These are all things I can't answer. But I'm telling you from an athletic standpoint and a size standpoint, they have a good offensive line. Well, they're going to be hyped. I'm looking at their schedule right now. They're going to be hyped as hell until the middle of next month. So another month of Miami hype because you got Bethune Cookman tomorrow. Then they play at Temple, which okay, and then they host Georgia Tech. They got to buy in between there. But oh, they'll be sky high. I'm not. Florida State's better than Miami. Don't get me wrong on this, guys. I Florida State will beat Miami. Should beat Miami. Will be favored to beat Miami. The game is here. I got no problems with that game. I'm not sitting around scared. I'm picking Florida State to win the game. I just think that if Miami wants to play keep away, they have an outside chance of doing it. Yeah, fair. It's uh, North Carolina on the 14th of next month and then Clemson the week after. Before the season, that looked a hell of a lot more daunting as a one-two punch, but we'll yeah. see what Clemson is at that point. That's actually – miami Clemson is a fascinating game. That's a good game. It's a fun game. That game's at Miami, right? Yeah. Uh, it is, yes. Yeah. Well, they might actually show up for that. At they, they might. They might. Zyler, great question. Who are the starting wide receivers next year? Get three of them. <laughs> Name three, because that's how we do it. in the Andravius the Jacobs, Hakeem Williams, and uh, Williamson. Okay. No Destin Hill. Oh, I apologize. You're right. Oh, no, I, man, you tough. might not be wrong. You might not be wrong. I don't. Oh, that's. Oh, that's good, Tom. That's real. What a good problem. Yep. What a good problem. Yeah, I would say probably Destin in the slot, but Van Dravis is, I mean, they might go four wide next year because you got Biscuit. I, does Morlock come back? I, I, I don't know. Morlock's getting so much run. I, I wonder what his... Morlock's got to come back. He's not going to the league this year. I don't know. That's just, that's a lot of playing time he's getting. Uh, how long do we keep Atkins? We touched on this last week, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll set the over under at two and a half more seasons. Two and a half more seasons, meaning... We get through coach three, three more years, right? Yes. Yeah, so he's got to coach through 25. Well, he's back next year for sure. Uh, that's a, that's a great over under. That's really tough, Tom. I'll say under. Okay. So I think he coaches two more years with us. Okay. 
if Miami and Florida State are both undefeated when they meet and the loser goes on to go undefeated from there, yeah. can they both be in the playoffs? Good question, Jude, because you're looking at well, SEC No, wins. first of all, they'd play each other again in the ACC championship if that happened. If we're undefeated when we play Miami, it means we beat Clemson. That's Clemson's second loss. They're gone. Yeah. It means Miami's undefeated, period. So I don't – I we would play again. Let's say that they both have one loss. So we beat – well, let's do it the other way. I like it better. Miami gets the better of us at home. Ouch. We both meet up again in Charlotte. We beat them. We both have one loss. Could the ACC pull an SEC or a Big Ten? Well, the SEC is a one-bid league this year, it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's starting to look like, anyhow. But the problem you have is that I think Southern Cal might go undefeated, and I'll tell you why. Um, Utah, who I've picked to beat Southern Cal each of the last two years and was right three different times because they played more than once. Um, was I right four times? Did they play each other four times? Anyhow, uh, is not good. Utah's not good. Yeah. And that's bad news for Florida, but I digress. Um, this version of Utah is not good. So I don't know who's going to beat USC. So let's assume they go undefeated and go. Okay. All right. Now, you go to the Big Ten. Penn State, Michigan, or Ohio State? All right. Well, they you got the Ohio State-Michigan game. They play each other. Yep. So somebody's going to lose a game there. Is Penn State going to lose to somebody in that conference? Because I don't think the Big Ten's real good right now. So, And I think Penn State is good. So somebody, I think, will emerge from that conference undefeated. That's two teams. Mm -hmm. The winner of Florida State-Miami is three teams. Penn Who's State has to play both Ohio State and Michigan, just, just for the record. All right. Well, they probably won't sweep, but if they do, they're definitely in. Yeah. Um, and then... Well, that gets interesting, guys, because what if Michigan loses one game and it's to Penn State, but they beat Ohio State and they go 11-1 and one, and Penn State's undefeated? And, you know, like, what happens? Two Big Ten teams get in? What if um, – because the perception of the ACC, understandably, is not good. So it's kind of hard to figure out how that will be perceived. Um but I don't think a two-loss SEC team is getting in for sure. So if Alabama loses one more time, they're done. Yeah. Um, Georgia will likely go undefeated. Look at I, USC's schedule, though. That game on October 14th is a lot more interesting than it was in the preseason when they traveled to Notre Dame. Interesting. They play Colorado, whatever. Washington and Oregon. Washington's good. They could lose to Washington. But all in the regular season, that's a loaded-ass schedule for USC this year. Well, oddly, and they also play Oregon on the road, uh, oddly, the pac is kind of really good in their final season. Yep. What a send-off. What a send-off. Well, that sucks. I hate it. I wish they still existed. I hate it. How do you feel about next year's linebacker group? Question. You, Much better. Uh, seeing Blake play, man, we got a dude now. We got a dude. He can cover. Yep. He's sideline to sideline, um, and then you bring in some guy. Yeah, no, I feel better. Steve says, is Pitt the biggest disappointment in the ACC so far? That's the one game we were really worried about prior to the LSU win. Cincinnati did kind of control that game. Last yeah, week. it's a bad loss. It's not a good loss. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Clemson's probably really the bigger disappointment right now. Yeah, I, I mean, say. to lose at home 28 to – I mean, to lose to Duke 28 to 7 on the road – I mean, 28 to 7, Jesus – Scott asks, haven't heard anything about Armella. Is he improving and did he get any playing time? He got plenty of playing time. Got a playing time. Yep. There's he's gonna get more chances to get playing time this year. If he can just hold his water, guys. I mean, his thing is that's a kid that wants to play. I get it. He wants to play, but he's not a starter right now. You just gotta buck up, soldier. Keep getting better. Be all right. You'll start next year. Got a chance to make your uh bones. Just like go easy. Wesley says, fans are looking way ahead. Any worries about the team doing the same? I don't think so, but we can't control that. So, you know. Also, I don't think so, no. Do you still think this team uh, is notable for its maturity, like through the two games with what you've seen? We saw them in camp. They were outstanding every day. They just went to work. What do you think about the performances in the two games? Yeah, man. I mean, I think that. When you watch film, I've said this a lot, when you watch film of teams and you see they can't compete, it's easy to lose focus. Um, 
I don't sense immaturity. I might, you know, it's tough, Tom. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not in that locker room. We, we neither of us are. I don't know what their deal is. Like, are they going out or what they're doing? I don't, I, I don't know who controls that locker room. Like we knew the 2013 team, we had some unquestioned leaders. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there were guys that you'd be like, they're not going to have this. They're going to step up and say this, this, and this, right? Um, and we knew who they were pretty early on. Yeah. I really don't know who that guy is on this team. Do you? Somebody's going to kick down a teammate's door for not doing what they were doing. Right. Who's that to? guy? I don't think they have a guy like that. I don't know. So, so, but I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know they need that guy. Yeah. 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 But I would like to, I'd like to know there was a guy like that that was an enforcer. Agreed. Steven, if Mike wins a natty this season, is there a school y'all think he would go to if he was offered? Not, no, not, uh, no, uh, no, um, no. Uh, let's see. King, we'll go with King. Can FSU reach uh, its potential if Smith and Scott miss more than half the season? I, st- I think so. I think it would hurt you, Tom, somewhere in there, man. I think you're going to face a defensive line that is going to make life tough. But, I mean, I see what you're saying. Um, Southern Miss was not equipped to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what that looks like. We got to third and fourth down too often for my taste in that game. Agreed. Yeah. So let's say you're doing that now on the road against Clemson without those two. And you have to punt the ball instead of going for it and have your quarterback make a ridiculous run around for 10 minutes play. Well, I, I would advise that in fourth and five from midfield. I would advise that. Let's see if Clemson can go 80 yards at the shortest distance. It's probably well, agreed, like but I had no problem with the fourth and three. I've got I, I I'm an aggressive fourth down math guy. There are times when I'm going you're at the 38 yard line, go for it. But there, but 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 listen, um, yeah, yeah, you won't always make the choices that he made in that game. Yeah. And by the way. If you want to marry that conversation with Johnny's drops, then all of a sudden, if you're not playing your best and that kid, you know, stalls a drive because you hit him in the hands on third and four and he can't catch it, Mm -hmm. uh, you got a problem on your hands at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Tony, thanks for the contribution. Jeff and Tom, your best estimates on what conference FSU jumps to and who will go with them. Uh, I would assume Clemson will go with them, and I think it's the SEC, and I would assume it's within the next three years. That's fair. The rumors behind the scenes flip-flop all the time. At this point, wait for the board of trustees to actually do something about it. I think the SEC is more likely, though. Yeah, I think the fear of the Big Ten drives the SEC to make the deal in the end. I don't know that they would do it on their own. Or ESPN and Fox make the Yeah. Yeah, right, right, yeah. exactly. Uh, Reed asks, I like this one. Maybe this is the one to end it on. I'm not sure. Take a look at the clock and you tell me. Would anyone on the 2023 team start over someone from the 2013 team? Keon Coleman Mm -hmm. has a chance to start for the 2013 team. I'll just say that. Jared Verse does too. Yeah. Anybody else? Would you dare the uh, the hubris of saying Jaheim Bell would have a chance to start over Nick O'Leary? Ooh, mm. that's a coin flip. That's a good one. Mm. I would also tell you if Daryl Jackson was eligible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. They're pretty deep up the middle, though. But they were, but Daryl's a different character, man. Not at linebacker. Not at safety. No. Not at corner. Nope. Any other wide receiver? Probably no. Keon's got, Keon's got the best chance. Yeah, no other receiver, though. Like, no, Keon, no. I agree. Yeah. Nobody in the line? Brian well, Stork definitely at center. Uh, Brian, Brian Stork at center would start. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think Matias and Jackson probably yeah, still they start. Yeah, they would still start, yeah. So it's just two dudes? Yeah. Maybe probably. maybe three if you count Keon? Yeah. Or if you count uh, Jaheim, excuse me, if you count The 2013 Jaheim. team's better than this team, yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Fair enough. Uh, Coming up tomorrow night on the channel is a Wake Up War Chant live broadcast. In between then, tomorrow, 1 p.m., we'll be back for the normal show. And then on Saturday, assuming that there are no changes to the game time, are we convening? You jumping in with me 11 a.m. on Saturday? Yeah, happy to. Okay. Yeah, 11 a.m. on Saturday. You and me will break it down for an hour against BC, uh, assuming the game's played. Yeah. Yeah. So are we doing it this way? 
Yeah, yeah, just from our homes. I like it. Um, I we'll like get it. a report, you know, from Ira, assuming that it's not uh, blustery and and uh, there's visibility. Uh, but I hope Ira out. makes it there comfortably. I'm worried about him. Um, he said he wasn't flying until Friday. I'm like, all right, partner. Yeah, all the way up up there too. Uh, yeah, my wife's flying out of New York on Friday, but it's in the morning, so I think I think she's covered there. Yeah, so I'm worried about uh, everybody that we love and the people in that area. And my brother's normally in New Hampshire. I'd be worried about him, but he's uh, teaching air traffic control school in Oklahoma City right now. So mm. we're good. When is the next bellying up? There's the last question from Dave. You want to do that tomorrow or Friday morning, Tom? When do you want to do it? Friday morning. Be in a festive mood on a Friday. All right. Friday morning, we'll do a bellying up, and I'm going to surprise you with something I've been thinking about. Oh, okay. I like that. <laughs> Safe travels to everybody out there. I see Chris and other people saying that they're traveling. Good luck, guys. Wish the ACC did better for you in transparency, but best of luck and, and safe travels to you. Peace out, everybody. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for uh, paying attention to anything we do, and thanks for supporting us, and thanks for listening to the Jeff Cameron Show, supporting War Chant. And uh, I hope you guys are digging, bellying up. It's a fun thing for us to do. You'll like the next one. If you didn't hear the first one, go back. It's on the feed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and enjoy. Have a good night. Football back tomorrow, which is a good thing.